joining us at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, where our pastor is Dr. W.L. Johnson Sr. We're so grateful that you spend this time of worship with us each week, and we ask that you continue to spread the word of God by sharing this video. And also, have a blessed week.
Finance Committee has made it possible for you to give your tithes and offerings by mail online at the church's website, www.mountziononline.org, and in person on Sundays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. The earth is the Lord's, the foot is thereof, the world and they that dwells within. This morning is the second Sunday of a new year. I've been led to read this particular passage of scripture coming from Luke, the 13th chapter, and the 6th through the 9th verse. And it reads as following. And he spake also unto the, this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in the vineyard. He came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on the fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth thee it the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year. So I tilled it about it and dug it. And if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that shall thou cut it down. My subject this morning is a second chance. A second chance, a second chance. My brothers and all my sisters, I'm happy today because I, like the tree in this text, has been granted one more year. Yes, I'm happy because God looked beyond my faults all right, all right. and saw my every need. He has given us, and given me at least, and you, another chance here in the year of 2021. And I decided not to take it for granted, take it lightly. For you see, I'm not going to take this year, 2021, the second Sunday of this year, for granted. Uh, this is a precious treasure. One more year. You, you got one more, one, one, one more year. About all the virtues of shortcomings and past mistakes and misdeeds yes god looked beyond our faults right. to give us one more year and i don't know about you but i count it a blessing i count it a blessing yes for we find here during this pandemic time to see another day so if you are able to hear this message that means that you are a reciprocal of one more year. I remember back in the day, back in the old church, they used to sing a song, the songwriter, you said, count your many blessings right. one by one. Count your many blessings. See what the Lord has done. So I thank God right now for another chance, chance after chance, privilege after privilege. And I want you to know today, and I don't know about you this morning, but I want you to know today he looked beyond our faults. Wish I had some help up in here. To see our every need. So here we find the text. We, first of all, I want to share with you that the fig tree, there are three trees in the Bible. The first tree is the tree of life. The second tree in the Bible, those of you who are Bible readers and Bible scholars realize the second tree was the tree of knowledge. And then the third tree is mentioned in the Bible. He talks about the fig tree. 
that the same tree that Adam and Eve took leaves off to wrap around them because of their nakedness, the fig tree. So today we want to talk about Jesus is giving a parable this morning. A parable is simply a earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Right. Parables are short narratives of stories. They are, the Lord used earthly things uh, that people are familiar with. So this morning, uh, we find that God has given us a spiritual lesson. He's given us a spiritual lesson. He talks this morning in this power, but he, he talks about three things. He talks, firstly, he talks about the owner of the vineyard. Right. Secondly, he talks about the fig tree that was located in the vineyard. And then thirdly, he talks about the dresser who works for the owner to keep up the vineyard. Right. Now, here in the text, we find that the owner in the Bible, let's break it down so we can have an analytical look as to who is actually in this parable. Number one, you have, yes, the owner who represents God. Right. Secondly, you have, yes, secondly, you have the fig tree, which represents you and I. And then thirdly, you have the dresser in the text who represents Jesus the Christ. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yes, I do. I'm talking about this man represents God. Yeah. Yeah. The vineyard represents Christ. And the vineyard, the yard itself represents Israel or the world. Amen. So the first thing we want to talk about is the privilege. Somebody said privilege. Yeah. Privilege. You know, it was a privilege to just be planted in the vineyard. It, it was a privilege to have an opportunity to just, for, for the owner to have enough to plant you there. Keep in mind that the same soil nourished the rain, the sun from heaven shined it on all the plants, the trees in the vineyard. But we find here just like some of us, we find here that that particular tree bared no fruit. Like some of us, we have the same soil. We are, we are nourished. We listen to the, yes, we, the same rain, the same sun shine on all of us. So the just as well as the unjust. But some of us, we're just like midgets. It doesn't matter about a midget. A midget can eat the same food as a regular child. doesn't matter how much he eats. He's still... Won't grow. Right. We find people that are in the church right now. They listen to the sermon. They, they attend Sunday school. They look at the, the scriptures and, and, and they hear the great singing, but they still won't grow. Right. It is all because of them not being fruitful. So we find here, here in the text, some of us uh, need to realize it's a privilege in an honor just to be in the presence of God. Right. So many times we take so many things for granted. But I thank God right now for Jesus. The fig tree, number one, it was a privilege for the tree to be there. And then secondly, when you look at the text, you find that it was a purpose for the tree to be there. He, he came and sought, the Bible says here in verse 6, he said he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Yeah. A man had a fig tree planted in the vineyard. Look what he says now. He said, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. A man with a fig tree growing in the vineyard looks for fruit but then finds the, the, the purpose of the tree, the purpose, the purpose, somebody say purpose. The, the purpose of the fruit tree, the tree was to bear fruit. It was planted to bear fruit. It exists only to bear fruit. All right, all right. It, it was by the nature of the fruit tree there on. They said it was supposed to bear fruit. It, it, it didn't exist for any other purpose. But 
to bear fruit. So we, I want to let you know this morning before I move on to something else, just in case you didn't know, we are here for one primary reason. And John, Luke, tell us why we're here. The Bible said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength. And then the Bible, he didn't stop right there, but he also said, love your neighbor right. as yourself. You're here to love. It doesn't matter about your accolades, doesn't matter about your position, doesn't matter about how your age, your stage, whether you're in your, it doesn't matter. Only thing that matters is your heart. For the Bible said, only the pure in heart shall see God. I wish I had some help up in here. But I want to let you know today that God, I, I didn't choose me. You didn't choose you. God chose us. He knew we was going to be here even tonight, this morning. Yeah. He knew that. Look what the Bible says. Look what John said. John said, can I speak for a minute? John said, go ahead and speak, John. John the 15th chapter in the 16th verse. He said, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I ordain you, and ye should go and bring forth fruit. And your fruit shall remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask in the name of Jesus. I'm talking about Elohim, El Shaddai, Jehovah, Jireh. Whatever you ask in my name, I give it to you. Verse 7 says, we find here, verse 7, verse 7, right here in the text. I'm not adding, I'm not taking away. He says right here in the text, he says to the vineyard dresser. You see, for those three years, I have come looking for fruit on this tree. But I find none. The daughter said, cut it down. Why should I continue to, to use up this ground and deplete this soil? It intercept the sun. It's just taking up room. It's saying it's looking good, but it's just taking up. Nobody buy a peach tree just for the leaves. Nobody buy an apple tree just for the leaves. You buy those trees to produce fruit. He says here to the gardener, for the last three years I come and look for figs on the fig tree and didn't find any. Cut it down. It's just using up my good soil. It's just, it's here, but it's just wasting up the soil. Some of us, we, we are here. We are here in the church. We are, we are here. We, we say we know the Lord. We have confessed with our mouth, believing in our heart. But, 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 but the question is, how fruitful are right. you? The, the day of weeping came, verse 7 still. But he said, I find no you see, I, I find nothing. I, I know some of you don't remember this song, but back in the day when I was young, growing up, there was a song that said, nothing from nothing. Leaves nothing. Right. And then he didn't stop right there. Let me add a little bit more too. He said, but you got to have something yeah. Yeah. Huh, to be with me. Isn't that what the songwriter said? But see, let's change the words. If you are for the Lord, that means you ought to have something. It'll show up in your walk, in your talk, in your attitude, in your mannerism. You ought to have something that others can attract so you can share God's divine word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, the tree failed. It produced no fruit. The, the, the owner, the owner, the owner of the vineyard had great anticipation, great expectation, looking every year, knowing that this tree, it looks good, but next year it's going to produce something. For three years, he found nothing. The Lord right now is telling us. He's giving us, each and every one of us, another chance. Amen. See, when the tree produced nothing, that was a great indictment on the tree. See, could you imagine one year he came? Nothing. The second year he came, disappointment. The third year he came, discouragement. Right. My brothers and my sisters, I don't know about you today, but this tree had been taking up all the resources. 
It had the care. It has the attention. But it produced how many of you right now, you're, you're here in the church and, and you're being nerds, you're being, yeah, you're, you're being, you're people in the church are embracing you and, and loving you, and yet and still you're not sharing God's goodness, God's mercy, God's divine word. Right. You, you're sucking it in, but you ain't letting it out. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you think of all the, I think I ought to tell you this, when God come seeking, he already know who you are. He already know whose you are. He already have know where you've been. Yes. I want to let you know the God I serve, he's, he sees all, he knows all, and he's everywhere. Yes. He's omnipotent, omniscient, and immutable. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, he sees all, he knows all, he inspects all, he watches everywhere we go. Amen. The songwriter said, you can't hide from God. If you go to heaven, he's there. If you make your bed in hell, he's there. If you go to the uttermost part of the earth, he's there. All right, all right. Some writer says, yeah, yeah, the fact that his eyes are on you right now. But, but then I remember the songwriter that says, uh, yeah, his eyes are on the sparrow. All right. So I know he's watching me. My brothers and my sisters. Everything I say, he hears. Everything I do, he sees. If, if I close my blinds or my drapes, he can still see through. When I, when I lock my door, he still can come in. Yeah. Oh, yes. So I want to ask you today, not only was there the privilege, the first part, and secondly, not only was there a purpose, but thirdly, you find in the text, there was production. Uh -huh. The day of production, weeping came. The tree was hurting, and the product production of the vineyard. Sometimes you can hurt some stuff, some things, some organizations, some positions when you don't do nothing. I found out in life that relocation is better than stagnation. All right, all right, all right. If you ain't doing nothing, yeah. and you're just holding a position, and not being productive. Yes, sir. Let me leave that one alone. But the Bible says every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Good fruit. And every corrupt tree yes. bring forth corrupt fruit. That I like what he says in the Bible. He says this in the Bible. He said, I am the vine. Yeah. And ye are the branches. He said, if you abide in me and I in him. You can bring forth much fruit. All right, all right. Are y'all in the house? So we find here the vineyard owner found no fruit. I'm coming on down now. The vineyard owner had waited patiently for fruit. Yes, the tree was wasting and misusing space, yes. hurting. Yes. I'm coming on down now. The owner pronounced judgment on the tree. Be not deceived, for God is not mine. Whatever you sow, you're going to also weep. He says here that the wages of sin is death, yeah. uh, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. So lastly, we find here the privilege. We talked about the fact that the purpose of the tree. We talked about the production of the tree. And lastly, I got to add this in. I just want to close with talking about the pardon of the tree. I wish I had some help up in here. You see, we find here that Jesus had mercy on the tree. He was the gardener. He was, he was, he said, he said to the owner, All right. give me one more. What, 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 one more year before you cut it down. Give me one more year to, to dig around it before you cut it down. Give me one more year to fertilize it before you cut it, cut it down. Thank God for his mercy. Yeah. Is there anybody here this morning can thank God for his mercy? Thank God he looked beyond your faults right. to see your every need. As I close, I want to tell you right now, I thank God for another chance. I thank God for a second chance. I thank God 
for Jesus. I thank God for looking beyond my faults to see my every need. I'm glad today that I got one more year. I got one more year to use it wisely. I got one more year to use and glorify God's divine name. I got one more year to honor and praise his name. I got one more year. I got one more year. I got one more year to lift up the name of Jesus. That's why I like the songwriter that says, there ain't no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do the same for you. Is there anybody here right now can say thank you right now? Can anybody over here praise the Lord? Can anybody up here lift up your holy hands and say, for God I live and for God I'll die. I'm glad today. I want to tell you my testimony is, as always, he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. I thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his grace. One more year. One more year. It ain't promised me. But thank God that Jesus is right there as a mediator. Pleading our case. So this year, 2021, let us not take it for granted. Let us be thankful and appreciative of God's goodness. And his, his mercy. Amen. God bless you. I've been through 
too much but now to worship him mm, say hallelujah hallelujah we come to let you know that our worship is Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Lord. To let you know that I worship Thee, you. You're so holy. You're so holy. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My worship is for real. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, my worship is for real. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, my worship is for real. is for real. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My worship is for real. Say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. We come to let you know that our worship is Lord, you're holy. is for real say yes yeah yes 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 message and I want to say to all of you who heard this message today I want to ask you a question are you saved the greatest tragedy that anybody could have at this day and time is to die and not uh, have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, the coronavirus is not the greatest tragedy. The greatest tragedy is to die and not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We extend an invitation to you. If you are not saved, God gave his only son, Jesus, and Jesus gave his life on Calvary, that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. All you have to do is to believe in God, believe in Jesus Christ, Believe that he is Jesus, the Son of God, and believe that he died for your sin. And the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. We extend to you an invitation. If you are not saved, we're going to ask that you will call. Call my number, 601-859-4267, and we will be glad to uh, accept your confession. Maybe you are out of fellowship with the church and you need to renew your membership. We also invite you, just give us a call. We'll be glad to talk with you. Or maybe you're in this community and you don't have a church home and you're looking for a church home. Just give us a call. To the new safety standards, we encourage everyone to stay safe and healthy by practicing social distancing, staying at least six feet apart from other individuals, and washing and sanitizing your hands for at least 20 seconds. Follow us on social media for church news and more. Thank you for worshiping with us.